north and west across the Avon Valley from Wood Green, on the northern edge of Hampshire's New Forest, you can see lush pastures stretching away into the distance towards Salisbury and Shaftesbury. Even in the pale sunshine of a winter's morning, the water meadows look prosperous and colourful. By contrast, if you look south and east, you're faced by the sombre prospect of the New Forest, with its gaunt heathlands and hungry soil. But even in the five February days when this film was made, the New Forest, which in spite of its name is over 900 years old, has many things to recommend it, including some fine weather at times. real foresters, are as different from the people who live in the rest of Hampshire as the people of Romney Marsh are from those who live in the rest of Kent. Forest customs are legion. Traditions go back through generations. It's sometimes said that it's more important to have been born on the right side of the cattle grid than on the right side of the blanket. Small farmers who live in the forest are called commoners. Economic necessity demands that most of them have jobs in addition to their farming. One of the best known is Hugh Passmore from Fritham. He and his wife seem to relish their lot even in the foulest weather. Uh, on a day like today, I, I think you, you think you're mad to be slogging around in the mud and the filth and even worse when it snowed, snows and you get snowed up. But I don't know, once you uh, start doing it, you just can't give up. We started some 25 years ago, we bought a couple of mares, and uh, we got so keen on it that uh, we finished up by having 80 mares on the forest. Well, uh, we've cut them down now, to, we've got about a dozen, but uh, uh, it, it sometimes does make you wonder why you want to do it. It's just a way of life, I think, You, you once you once you've done it, you can't bear to be without some form of animals around you. Commoners pay what is called a marking fee of £10 a year for each animal they keep loose on the forest land. Uh, well, anybody who has land in the forest which, uh, to which common rights are attached uh, can uh, turn out any number of animals. Doesn't matter if you only got half an acre, you can turn out a hundred animals. In fact, there are just 3,000 altogether on the forest now. That's uh, 1,600 head of cattle, and uh, the rest of them are ponies. And uh, that is uh, about 750 less than there were three years ago. Uh, economics come into that. Uh, people can't make money out of ponies on the forest now as they could in the old days. So that, uh, inevitably, uh, they're not going to keep so many. Hugh Passmore's wife, Margaret, is as keen on the ponies as he is. Would you like to go in and get it out? Yeah. Check it out. I don't think, honestly, that uh, you could do this single-handed. Um, she works quite as hard as I do, sometimes jolly side harder. Uh, you see, you've got all sorts of things 
bucking out the stables, carting the hay, and uh, we make about uh, 15 acres of hay. She carts bales of hay around just the same as I do. Oh, you, you just, I'm sure you wouldn't want to uh, keep as many stock as we do if you didn't have a helper. And you certainly couldn't afford to have a paid helper, so your wife <laughs> comes in very handy in that way. Now then, I put it a bit closer, kicking a bit today. Such a horrible day. Yeah. Don't blame them. Can you cut this one? No. Huh? I take it up as it is. Right. Commoners' animals face many dangers. Scores are killed or injured every year by vehicles on the new forest roads. There's also the occasional threat of theft and rustling and the possibility of natural accidents to animals as they wander far from their homes. All these hazards create big problems for people trying to make a living out of cattle and ponies when they're running unfenced on the forest. Is missing. She didn't come yes, up, did she? Yes, she is. I know. I noticed that when we are up there. But yeah. won't matter. She's perfectly all right. The, the, yeah, um, the rest... With all of I think them. the whole of the rest of them are here, yeah. so we don't have to worry. No. Um, I tell you what, though. What? That, that uh, skew ball down there is showing a pin bone slightly. I don't know whether we'll... Uh, yes, I think, I think... Well, we could put her down at Minstead or, or the field at Cadnam. Yeah, we? perhaps we ought to. In addition to being allowed to graze their livestock on the open forest, some commoners have the right to gather wood for burning. You're allocated the cord of wood in any particular part of the forest, and you've got to go and pick it up. But you don't get that unless it's a, a right which comes to you from the uh, 1850, when the claims were established in 1850. You can't get one now. Fencing is a permanent chore for commoners like the Passmores. Their fences mostly manage to keep the animals in, but they're not nearly robust enough That's to keep enough. the poachers yeah. out. <coughs> I think I will hold that lot. You may remember about four or five years oh, ago, yeah, no. I was fool enough one night to get up and see some uh, poachers lights out in the fields. Uh, I was fool enough to go down to tackle them I got as far as the second field in. There was the buck in the hedge with the dogs attacking it. I drove them off. And um, then these fellows with their searchlights shone them in my eyes. Another fellow tackled me from behind, knocked out four teeth, split my face open, and uh, really gave me a, a rough time of it. But um, since then, I don't think they've been back very often. Because this next time, uh, we're, we shall phone the police first before going out. <laughs> I learnt my lesson then. One of the great joys for the Passmores is being able to ride straight out onto the forest from their home. Your animals take you out into the forest. They, they uh, even on a day like today, when normally you would probably sit in front of a fire, well, if you've got animals, you've got to do something about it, so you go out. And that, I think, is the great point about it. You see more of the forest, and you see it in all its moods. Uh, today, it's pretty awful. In the summer, in May, June, and so forth, it's absolutely marvellous. And if you're interested in flowers and so forth, well, of course, again, you've got the hedgerows and the birds. No, I think it's the animals give you the entree to the way of life in the forest. The weather in February changes as swiftly as at any other time of the year in England. And not all the deer are poached, though it is an increasing problem for the police and the Forestry Commission. These fallow deer, sunning themselves in a meadow with a new forest pony, are the responsibility of keeper Derek Thompson, who can sometimes summon them with his voice, plus a bit of bribery in the form of food.
they will clear the lot eventually. They'll eat the maize first, which is the choice, and then go on to the um, cattle cake a bit later. Yeah. Now, they're in winter coat now, aren't they? That's right. They're all in the winter coat, which is that sort of um, dirty, what we call mulberry colour. Mm. Uh, in the summertime, of course, they've got that lovely spotted coat. Yes, and that sort of reddish colour. That's right, but the big yeah, spots. Yeah, that's when, uh, uh, September is the time of season. Yes, early it is September. really. Early yeah. September when the bucks are in their best, yeah. antlers, um, in the best coat. They look so nice then. Yeah, smashing. Now, all these male deer here, they've still got their antlers, haven't they? They don't keep them all year, do they? No, of course, they drop their antlers around about March, April time. Yeah. And then within two or three days, of course, the new ones start growing, starting off with little buttons and gradually getting bigger and bigger until... Yeah. Well, end of August, September, when the velvet, which is protecting the antlers, drops off, and they've got their new set of antlers for the um, for the rut. No, they haven't been frightened by poachers, just by a couple of New Forest ponies feeling frisky. Every Wednesday, the people of the New Forest descend on Ringwood for market day. Even if they're not buying or selling, they're always friends to see, gossip to exchange and bargains to contemplate. It's a busy and bustling scene and has had none of its charm destroyed by the dead hand of modernization. The auctioneer at Ringwood is John Woolley. We find that we're in the middle of the new forest down here and uh, these days it's a, an area where there are many small holdings uh, close to us um, and people seem to like the small um, community type market that we, we operate down here. 25, Things have changed certainly over the last few years. Um, uh, there used to be um, little dairy farmers in this part of the world, um, and everyone used to have a sort of sow at the end of the garden, which uh, they used to produce their uh, two litres a year and this sort of thing, and bring them up here, and we used to sow a lot of these um, uh, small units. Um, these days it's changed a lot. We've got a lot of people... Uh, who um, have come down to live in the forest, as you know. Um, it's, it's a, a tourist area as much as anything else. It's a place to retire to. But they've still got their few acres of ground at their house, and they like to have one or two calves to rear, a horse, as I say, or a goat even, this sort of thing. And we find uh, that people know that we're here and we can produce these uh, um, sort of stock figures from Ringwood and in the area. And uh, the customers are here and the, and the, and the uh, farmers are here, so uh, the whole thing knits together in a small sort of way, you see. It's not only a cattle market at Ringwood, it's a thriving street market as well. It's often cheaper, and certainly a lot more fun, than conventional supermarket shopping. Nothing wrong with it. It's come out the policy bag. I need a bit of a wash through.